February 2012. The shooting death of teenager Trevon Martin. When Marley Graham was shot and killed inside his home. Two unarmed African American teenagers in two separate states succumbed to the same fate. In Florida, Trayvon Martin was carrying candy when he was gunned down by Neighborhood Watch volunteer George Zimmerman. The Bronx teenager being pursued by police moments before he was killed. In New York City, where Marley Graham was standing in his bathroom when he was shot in the chest by a plainclothes narcotics officer who forced himself into the home without a warrant. The 18 year old was not in possession of a gun or drugs. And according to NYPD officials, the 30 year old cop who pulled the trigger lacked the proper training to work in his assigned unit. Two months have passed and there have been no charges in connection with the killing. It's the lack of training uh, in, in these situations and a lack of respect for the communities that you're patrolling that allows an officer to sort of act in a unauthorized, undisciplined, outside the guidelines manner, uh, which in essence is acting like a cowboy. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not in the Wild West. The fatal police shooting of a 68 year old ex Marine. Kenneth Chamberlain Sr. was the U.S. war veteran who fell victim to unnecessary deadly police force last November. The 68 year old was tasered and shot by officers who responded to a false alarm from a medical alert pendant. Chamberlain reportedly instructed the officers to leave before they broke his door down. An investigation into his killing remains ongoing. Too often, the police are putting themselves in situations where violence becomes a more likely outcome. And this is the result often of overly aggressive policing policies. The exact number of Americans killed by overly aggressive policing remains unknown because the U.S. Department of Justice does not require police departments to report fatal shooting statistics. Meanwhile, the New York City Police Department, the world's largest, has refused to release internal reports on police shootings from 1996 through 2006. Until you begin holding those officers accountable, until uh, when they commit certain acts, they actually go to jail or they lose their pensions. Um, you're going to have a resistance because they feel sometimes that they can commit these acts with impunity, meaning that they know that other than a few headaches or hiccups, nothing is really going to happen to them, which is why we bring cases and actions against the officers. <laughs> Persistent use of police tasers is also being blamed for the death of 500 people in the U.S. since 2001. Turn around, put your hand According to Amnesty International, dozens of deaths can be traced to unnecessary force. Policies for taser use vary from state to state. Experts say it's time for Washington to create strict national guidelines to protect the public. From police growing trigger happy with electric shock devices. This would help clarify things both for police departments and also, frankly, would strengthen the hands of people who want to bring litigation against the police for civil rights violations because it would show, it would provide a standard that they could use for challenging these local police practices. Critics claim justice is rarely served when those who kill turn out to be police officers. In many instances, leaving the very people entrusted with enforcing the law well protected when they violate it. Marina Portnaya, RT, New York.